Hey guys. All right, so this video is going to be on 8-7, which is factoring special cases. And before we get into it, let's just review what a special case is. And here's an example. Uh, remember that h plus 5 squared is also called like the same binomial twice, h plus 5 times h plus 5. What we learned is that the result of that will be a trinomial. And the quickest way to do it is to realize that if you were to foil out the entire binomial, uh, you would just wind up doing h times h as your first terms. And h times h would be h squared. So that's kind of how you know you get that first term. You just take the h and you square it. Uh, same thing goes for the 25 over here. You would just be multiplying your last terms from the binomial, and that would be 5 times 5, which would give you that 25. So that's how you get that term. The way you get the middle term, which would go in this blank spot, you would take the terms of the binomial, 5 and h. You would take the 5 and the h and multiply them together and then double it. That's the key part, remembering to double it. Uh, 5h times 2, well, that's going to be 10h. So that's how you would figure out your answer when you are just multiplying a special case just like that. But what we're doing today is kind of going backwards. We're going to be taking the trinomial that we got as the answer and working backwards to figure out the binomial that gave it. So here's the first example, x squared minus 14x plus 49. So we already know that the answer is going to look like two binomials, so we can just set up the two sets of parentheses. Next, you would realize that the first terms would have to be x and x because the only way that you would FOIL to get x squared would be if your first terms were x. Next, uh, because we're going to have the same binomial twice, you know that your final answer is going to look like some set of parentheses being raised to the second power because it's the same binomial twice. So the only thing you really need to figure out at this point is what will the sign be? That's the important part. You know it's the same binomial twice, and you know the first two terms are going to be x and x, so the thing that really matters is going to be what will the sign of the middle uh, be. So the way you figure that out is you kind of have to figure out what the other blank spot is going to have. Uh, so basically, you're going to do the 49, and you're going to square root it. And when you square root 49, just recognize there is a positive sign in front of it, and your 14 is also going to be negative. So either 7 times 7 is 49, or negative 7 times negative 7 is 49. Well, since the 14 is negative, and remember the question, what two numbers multiply to get 49 and add to get negative 14? Since the two 7s are going to have to add to get negative 14, they're going to have to be negative 7. Because negative 7 plus negative 7 is negative 14. So once you kind of answer the question like that, you can very quickly get your answer. And your answer would be those two binomials. But you would write it like that, x minus 7 quantity squared. And of course, you can check with FOIL. So let's just go ahead and do another example, and I think you'll catch on pretty quickly. Uh, so here's another trinomial, and again, you know your setup is going to have the two sets of binomials. So you basically just square root the first term of the trinomial and the last term of the trinomial. And 36x squared, well, that's going to give you 6x, and 25 square, square rooted, sorry, I said 36x squared, square rooted, uh, and 25 square rooted, that would be 5. <clears throat> and then now notice that the 60 is being is a positive 60. So the only way you're going to add two numbers to get positive 60 is if both of those numbers are going to be positive. So that means the 25 has to be a positive 5 times a positive 5. And of course, you can check that very easily. Uh, just take 6x times 5, and you multiply them, positive 5 times positive 6, and then you double that, and you would get 30 times 2, which is 60. And that's what your middle term is, 60. 
So basically, you know that 6x plus 5 squared is going to be your final answer. You just square root the first term of the trinomial and the last term. All right, so here are three practice problems for you to try. Uh, give them a shot, pause the video for a second, and when you hit play again, it will resume. All right, so let's see how you did. So the first one, you have a 64x squared, and when you square root 64, you're gonna have eight, and you have a plus nine, so when you square root that, you're gonna get three, and then because your 48 is positive, that means the sign in the middle has to be positive. That's the only way you're gonna maintain a positive answer. And you can check by doing 8 times 3, which is 24, and doubling that, and you got a positive 48, so that checks out. The second answer is going to be uh, 5r minus 8, because when you square root 25, you get 5, and when you square root r squared, you get r. And then when you square root 64, you get 8, and then because the 80 is negative, you are going to have to have a negative sign in the middle. And then, of course, you can check that by doing 5 times negative 8, which is going to be negative 40. And then if you double that, you get your negative 80. And all right, the last one, uh, the answer will be 4e minus 11 uh, quantity squared. And for the same reason, uh, 4e because 4 times 4 is 16 and e squared is, is or e to the second power is e squared. And then uh, 11 times 11 is 121. And then, because it is a negative 88, the only way that you would add to get a negative answer is if you were adding two negative numbers. All right, so that's the first special case situation you're going to be in. The second one is the situation where you have the opposite binomials multiplying. And if you remember from foiling that out, you basically get this expression where your two middle terms would cancel out to zero. And then your first and last terms become your final answer. So basically all you have to do is multiply the firsts and the lasts. But we are working backwards again, so it's very simple to undo this process. You already know that you're going to have a plus and a minus sign. You really just have to figure out what are the first terms and what are the last terms. So here's an example, c squared minus 100. You already know there are going to be two binomials as your final answer, and you know your first terms are going to be c, because that's the only way you would get c squared. The only way you get 100 is by doing 10 times 10, or, or the square root of 100 is 10. And you know the signs have to be opposite, so you're done. It's really easy. Yeah, opposites, cool. So... Next example, 4a squared minus 25. Again, you know because it's, uh, it, because it's negative. Oh, that's something to notice. That every single example that you're about to see, it will always be uh, subtracting. That's how you know it's going to be a situation where you have the opposite binomials. So the setup is going to look like that. Two binomials where the signs are opposite. And you basically will square root both the 4a squared and the 25 to get the values that will fill in the blank spots. So 4a uh, squared square rooted gives you 2a, and then 25 square rooted gives you 5. And then you can always check with FOIL. All right, here's one that is just one way that you're going to start seeing some curveballs that start to come through, uh, kind of thrown at you. Uh, 24 and 54 are not perfect squares. So since they're not perfect squares, what you have to realize, and this is really, really important, so if you are sharing earbuds with somebody and they're not listening right now, get their attention. This is really, really important. Basically... There has to be a GCF that you can remove from the binomial so that your result will be involving perfect squares. Uh, take a look at the 24 and the 54. What 
could you factor out as a GCF? Were you thinking that you could divide by 6? Because if you divide both of those numbers by 6, well, the 6 would now be on the outside of a set of parentheses, and 24 divided by 6 is 4, which is a perfect square, and then 54 divided by 6 is 9, which is also a perfect square. This is going to start to happen in your problems. In fact, some of you were asking me about the classwork where one of the answers just, you know, you couldn't figure it out and you were trying the methodology really, really closely. Uh, this could have been one of the issues that you were having. There was a GCF that you had to factor out. So again, notice though, now that we have perfect squares and we have a minus sign in the middle, uh, so that's the difference of perfect squares, you are basically going to know the setup of your answer, the two binomials with the opposite signs, and the square root of 4 is going to be 2, and the square root of e squared is just e, and the square root of 9 is 3. And there you go. So, in conclusion, all of these special cases... Uh, starting with these trinomials that look like this, notice you have a 4a squared minus, and then there's a plus. And then in the other situation where they are both plus signs, these are the only two situations that we have been looking at. You know your final answer is going to be some set of parentheses where it is being uh, subtracted. So uh, the two terms are being subtracted and it's that same binomial twice or the two terms are being added and it's that same binomial twice. These are the only two situations you're going to be in with that kind of a trinomial. Oh, and then I guess I'm just working it out. Uh, 81 square root to 9 and 4a squared. When you square root that, you get 2a. And then when you square root 49 n squared, you get 7n, and the square root of 1 is 1. Uh, so just basically notice, when you have the minus sign and the plus sign trinomial, you know your final answer is going to be the difference of two perfect squares. And when you have two plus signs, you know the answer has to have a plus sign right there. If you do enough of these, and when I say enough, I mean like 50 of them, you will probably know to solve the patterns and you will be able to fly through these on the end of course exam. So the other kind of special case we looked at is the special case binomial where it is going to be the difference of two numbers that are perfect squares, the difference of squares. So you know you're going to have the opposite signs for your binomial answers and the square root of 144 is going to be 12 and the square root of 25x squared is going to be 5x. So again, notice, it's the difference of two perfect squares. That's what will give you this answer. And the opposite signs, that's what you always kind of look for. Uh, here's one quick thing to just point out, because this is what is going to come up in the future, uh, very close to the end of the year. You can't actually factor a positive special case binomial. Because if you, if you look up from the example uh, up here, here's a minus and plus sign. And then here's a plus sign and a plus sign example. But down here with the binomial, I'm only showing you a, a minus example. So if you were to have an example like this where it is the sum of two perfect squares, well, there's, you can't really factor it. And if you try to, you, you won't really be able to get that answer. And you've got to figure out kind of why. But that's going to come up later on in the school year. So check your email for the classwork assignment. Uh, I sent it out last night, and all the details are included in that. Hope this video works. Uh, go back, listen to it again, pause it, do whatever you need to do, and I'll see you guys next time.